oh, hope you don't crash this one, or oh, hope this one doesn't go down, and just whoop, and that is a big no-no in my book. What is going on everyone? Welcome to another episode of Yammy Noob. Today is a bit of a self-indulgent one. We are talking about my pride and joy, my wonderful, ugly, beautiful Daytona 675R, the race prepped bike that I always talk about in my videos. People often tell me, they're like, Yam, you always talk about your race bike. You always talk about your race bike, but we never see your race bike. Well, that's because there's Honestly, like way many more interesting videos I wanna make and talk about than just parade out my own personal motorcycle. This channel is not about me, it's about motorcycling, it's about the bikes we got going on, it's about motorcycle culture, but every once in a while I like updating you guys on my personal bikes, what's going on with me. So, the title of today's video is I crashed at 115 miles per hour on my race bike and then I rebuilt the whole thing by myself. So, as Josh and Spite can attest to here in the shop, there's been a beloved Daytona that has been not so beloved looking in the past couple of weeks. This bike has been in several states of disarray and disrepair because of what happened to it about five or six weeks ago. And then the whole process I took it through to bring it back to life and make it better than ever. So I'm gonna tell you that story today. Let's get started. All right, so about six or seven weeks ago, I was on track with this machine doing some practice runs. I was out here at Harris Hill Raceway, which is a local track to me here in Austin. It's a little south of Austin in San Marcos. I was out there just doing some drills, doing some endurance training, trying to get some seat time on the bike, practicing some threshold braking, a couple things I wanted to dial in on it. Just having a pretty good track day overall was actually not racing when this happened. And I was on the track maybe my fourth or fifth session of the day, and there was this guy that was maybe two or three corners ahead of me who was running much slower than I was so I could see him throughout the track day and that kind of stuff. I knew of his bike and I knew of this guy, and I'd actually never seen him before at this track. So on this particular lap, he was maybe about half a lap ahead of me and I knew I was gonna eventually catch him and lap him and stuff, but and this particular lap, he ended up dumping a bunch of oil out of his bike because of an improperly fitted filter and improper maintenance. So that goes to show you guys that whenever you go to your track days and go to your local events, normally there's a tech inspection and everyone wants to make sure the bikes are safe. However, this was a club day, a member day, and the tolerances there for tech inspections are usually a bit lower. There actually wasn't someone on the facility at each corner with flags and stuff like there normally are. This was more of a grassroots kind of track day, which was a bit of a bummer because I did not see the oil and was not alerted to the oil by the time I got there, and he had recently dumped it out on track. So as I was coming into the corner, I was trailing it in and I noticed a bit of a movement and then all of a sudden just whoop, front end just washed away from me. And as I slid and went down, I started tumbling. I was actually going fast enough to where it happened really quickly, but so fast that I actually slid for such a long time that I had time to think about what was happening. So as the bike washed away from me and I started sliding and slipping around, I thought to myself, well, I wasn't pushing that hard. I wasn't on that hot of a lap. I don't really know what happened. And then by the time I got up and came to, I looked at the track and I saw the giant black strip on the track and the dude that was way out ahead and uh, off the side of the track because he improperly maintained his motorcycle. And that is a big no-no in my book. Got to, kind of took a look at the bike, started kind of assessing. You know, you have those moments where you're sliding through the gravel and stuff. You're just like, man, this is gonna be expensive and this is gonna suck. And one thing I wanna tell you guys, and I see this comment a lot, because on Instagram, I've been posting up about this bike and I post up things that I'm doing to it. A lot of people are saying, oh, hope you don't crash this one, or oh, hope this one doesn't go down. But that's the point of a track bike and kind of the point of a race bike is that it does go down. When you're riding a motorcycle in a competitive environment, when you're riding it to push your limits, on track, things just happen. And then on this particular day, I was unlucky and I hit some oil and I hit the deck. Could I have been paying a little bit better attention? Possibly. Could there have been someone there flagging it down? Definitely. It was a confluence of events, things happen on track, it is what it is. 
Anyways, I came to, took a look at the motorcycle, realized that my plastics were screwed, my clip-ons were screwed, um, quite a few of my controls were messed up, uh, a lot of things were messed up, the rear wheel was in a beautiful taco shape, now a fajita shape as it were. Many, many things were wrong with this motorcycle, and I knew that I was gonna have my work cut out for me, unfortunately. However, this motorcycle, because it is an absolute gem and a peach of a bike, the frame and the engine were A-OK. -okay. I had it looked over, I was taking a look at it, cranked over the engine, it started up just fine after it went down and flipped over a couple times, the forks were straight, and so everything was looking pretty good. However, so many things were wrong with this bike that I decided to go ahead and purchase a second parts Daytona. So what I did was I went up to Dallas, I found this really clean track spec Daytona uh, for about 4,500 bucks, and I decided it would probably be wise if I'm gonna keep racing and tracking and doing stuff to this bike to have a backup or a B bike. Now, my original plan was to go ahead and set up the B bike as a backup bike and do all this other stuff because I had a full set of K-Tech forks on the other one, K-Tech rear suspension, a bunch of goodies that I was gonna keep on that bike and then fix this one. However, when I got both bikes here in the shop, I started taking a look at what was actually wrong with my main bike and I thought, well, I don't think I can get this one to a point where it's good enough to be like this one and have two motorcycles. So I made the executive decision to basically just start harvesting parts from the parts Tona onto this main bike and keep the other one as a backup parts bike. So a lot of guys when they go racing will do this where they have a main bike and a secondary bike, usually both set up and ready to race so that when you're out there on a given weekend, if you destroy one bike, you have another bike that you can keep racing with and doing stuff with. However, the point that I'm at right now, I really just wanted to keep one main bike that was good and have a bunch of parts ready to go to swap onto my main bike in case something went wrong, which, Inevitably on a track day or a race weekend, you're gonna have clip-ons that need replacing or levers or light body works or a rear set here and there. Plenty of my buddies out at race weekends have had to hot swap rear sets or clip-ons or levers. It's a very common thing to happen when you're out there on a normal given weekend. So after I came back here with all the parts from the parts Tona and started looking at my other bike, again, I realized that I had a lot of work cut out for me, but I really didn't want to take it to a mechanic this time. I, I felt that the, the level of damage and things that needed to be modified and changed on the existing bike was at a level that which I felt comfortable taking on. So I'm gonna tell you all the things that I did on this motorcycle after a quick word from our sponsor for today. All right guys, today's video is supported by Rockform. You guys have seen us talk about this brand before in our videos and it's for good reason. They are very well known in the motorcycling community for making handlebar mounts, phone mounts, all kinds of good stuff for your motorcycle. However, they don't just make motorcycle stuff. Rockform also does stuff for boats, for cars, for golf carts. Josh the other day was telling me they do a bunch of stuff for golf carts and golf equipment. I don't golf personally, but if you do, that could be a good fit to just slap onto your golf cart. Uh, maybe you could put a turbo on your golf cart and make me happy. But Rockform has been a longtime partner of ours. We really like what they do. We like the product. We all use them on our personal motorcycles to mount up our phones and have a good time with them. So if you use the code YN25, you'll get yourself 25% off your entire order by clicking the link down below. Thanks to Rockform for supporting today's video. All right guys, we're off the tripod now and we're gonna take a closer look at this motorcycle and a lot of the stuff that I did to it. However, I think what would be beneficial is if we stepped over to the other room and checked out the parts Tona first. So let's walk over here. There she is, the parts Tona, a bunch of the old plastics and a bunch of the old stuff on this motorcycle. If you can believe it, this bike actually used to have all of its componentry on it and was a running bike. However, my bike was set up with a bit nicer parts and just generally better and ready to go. So I decided to put it all onto my existing motorcycle. Uh, one of the most interesting parts that this bike had on it actually was this knockoff big master cylinder. See if you guys can see this here. I have actually never seen one of these before which was interesting. So if you guys know what that brand is, I'd be happy to hear it. Uh, I had a Hindle exhaust system originally equipped on this bike. Um, however, uh, some things happened and it did not make it to the other motorcycles. So I had to keep my existing exhaust. Here's the taco shaped rear wheel that I was telling you guys about. The damaged fairings and all that stuff. 
So this motorcycle served a great purpose for my other bikes. So let me walk over there and show you guys all the stuff we put and kept on my original bike. All right, so first of all, these plastics came from the parts Tona. Uh, these plastics were a bit of a pain to get mated onto this bike. However, I ended up getting them to fit and I got them painted and with a new graphics kit put on there with my race numbers and all that stuff, which is looking pretty good. Went for a gold and white and black color pattern this time. I kept the original Olin's forks that my bike had. Um, a lot of you guys on Instagram saw that I was trying to swap out to the K-Tech front end that the other bike had. Those are actually right over here. Now, the reason I did not put the K-Tech front end on the bike as much as I wanted to was because I am really dumb and I actually cross-threaded this brake caliper when I was trying to put it back on. Uh, don't ask me how I did that when I was fitting the lines, um, but I indeed ended up cross-threading that brake caliper. So if I wanted to use these forks, I'd have to get some new brake calipers because the Brembos that I have on this machine do not mate up to the K-Tech. So that's a bit of an unfortunate thing that happened, but it is what it is. So I kept the original front end from my bike, same front fenders, same front forks, same brakes and all that, just swapped over. I ended up putting a new front tire because the other one had a big chip in it. But one of the big changes I made to this bike was going for a direct stainless steel line setup. So what that means is that the ABS pump on this machine has actually been plugged up and deleted. It's still there, but it's been bypassed and completely removed for the front brakes. So the front brakes now go directly from master cylinder right here, all the way to the calipers right there. You can actually see the two lines over there. If I can get this camera to focus, there you go, you see the two lines from the master cylinder going right over there. So that provides a higher degree of feel, more power through the lever, the fluid's moving through a smaller set of tubes. So I ended up putting those on direct. I had to order special brake lines for that. It was a whole process. I had to plug up the original ABS line, remove the ABS brakes. Uh, it was a whole big process. But now you guys can see over here on this side, there is just a big hole where the ABS module used to be, which is kind of cool. So my bike actually ended up going down on its right hand side and you can see that on my brake lever guard right there. Let's try to zoom in on that. You can see some of the damage right there. And you can also see it over here on my rear sets. You can see some of the damage right there and some of the damage on the exhaust right there. Luckily, all this was able to be fixed and continue to be used. Uh, that's why you buy good high quality parts so that they can crash and keep going. Uh, case sliders did their job. Actually, never even touched the frame sliders, never even touched the ground. I feel like the brake lever guard over here did the majority of the work keeping the other bike safe, but the, uh, excuse me, this bike safe, but then, you know, it ended up flipping upside down as a whole big thing. You can also see right here, I harvested the front fairing stay from the other bike. So right there where it says moto holders, that is actually the front fairing stay from the parts Tona because the original front fairing stay that I had on this bike uh, got bent and warped because it did flip upside down. So it could not be used anymore after that. The other really cool part that came along with the parts Tona is this subframe right here. So this was a fun install. I learned something new, putting on a new subframe on a bike, but this is a much lighter component, much cooler looking component, and just kind of a bit of a flex to put on everybody whenever you show up with a new subframe on your machine, which looks very cool and purposeful. Again, as I mentioned, the parts Tona had the new wheel and all of that, which was great. And one of the big things that was important to me for getting a parts bike was that there's a lot of stuff that I couldn't see on my original bike that was broken and needed replacing as well. So going through and itemizing everything would have just taken so long and there's just no way of knowing. For example, on the front wheel assembly here on my bike, after the crash, the front axle was bent ever so slightly. So it was a really big pain in the butt getting that thing off and onto the wheel. And you can only see that after you get the wheel completely off the bike. Had I just gotten a new front wheel, I would have never known that the axle was bent and it would have compromised the handling of this machine. The other thing as well is that the spacers over here for the rear wheel somehow also got bent up a little bit, but the axle was all good. But it just goes to show you that when you get yourself a parts specific motorcycle, a backup bike, you can actually go through 
and sort out a bunch of the little stuff. And now if anything happens to this bike, if it goes down again and let's say the gas tank ends up getting a hole in it or something, which by the way, my gas tank covers it a great job right here. Um, I have a whole new gas tank ready to go. I have all the parts of frame and an engine ready to go from the other parts bike that will allow me to continue using this motorcycle in a racing and track oriented way. The big thing that I was really happy about actually was my master cylinder, my RCS-19, uh, was literally untouched, which was a miracle. This is a very expensive part and I really did not want to replace it. Um, so I was really glad when it was uh, apparent that it could still be used after the big wreck. Also, putting on new braided lines uh, was a lot of fun. It was a new experience for me, filling up a uh, brake system from empty like that and setting everything up right here. It was a really beautiful uh, HEL braided lines here direct to the caliper. And I gotta say, it's pretty amazing. This motorcycle's gone down about three times now. Two of them pretty seriously, and one of them was a stupid low side that happened to it. And it's still good, it's still going, it's still strong, it still runs really well. Um, that just goes to show you that if you put good componentry on a bike and you really use the right protective stuff on a motorcycle, they will last a long time. Frames and engines uh, tend to do extremely well after crashes and stuff like that. So hope you guys enjoyed this little behind the scenes look on my race bike. Uh, I will probably be participating in two or three races this year. Uh, I'm not gonna be doing the full calendar. I'm just too busy to do that, unfortunately. And honestly, I am just a uh, mid-pack club level racer that's just having fun. So for me, as long as I just show up and have some fun, that's what counts. I'm not out there trying to win a whole championship or something like that. But um, yeah, I love the Daytona. It's a great platform, really good motorcycle. I'm happy to report that it's still running strong and I'm really happy that it's still doing its thing after going down at the track, which was what it's designed to do at this point. Well, it's not designed to crash. It's designed to have fun at the track, but crashes are kind of inevitable. So I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later. Oh, hey, you're still here. I can't believe you made it to the end of the video. Not many people do. Just for you, I have a little treat. Hit this link over here. Check out the next video on the Yemen Noob catalog. What's gonna happen in it? I don't really know. Maybe there's a boost in it. Maybe there's some cool wheelies. Maybe there's some fun memes. Probably. Who can say?